Hi, it's Dwyer, GamblersAdvisory.com. For premium picks, DwyerVIP.com. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. You should have made a nice profit on this fight. The pre-fight video is still up. On that pre-fight video, I said you need to hedge this. Right? Take Scott by decision. Take Chisora by knockout. Understand you should have gotten better than even money on both sides of the bet. But even if you didn't, Chisora by knockout paid at least 4 to 1 in most books. So you could have structured the bet so that you made a profit if either happened. Chisora got the knockout. Now let's talk about the mechanics of this fight. First, the stoppage. I want everyone to realize that if this referee were the referee for Buster Douglas versus Mike Tyson, Buster Douglas would have been counted out in that fight. Right? There was a moment in the Mike Tyson fight where Buster Douglas gets knocked down at the end of a round. And just like Malik Scott, he takes his time. Keep in mind, you're supposed to have nine seconds to get up, right? He takes his time, gets up at the count of nine, and of course the fight's allowed to continue. Thereafter, Buster Douglas ends the reign of Mike Tyson, who in my opinion was never the same again in the ring. Right now here, this referee in my opinion blew the count. He's counting Malik Scott's up on a knee. Now my point is simply this. The referee should be observing Malik Scott. I believe it's clear to lay people like us watching the fight that Malik Scott plans on getting up. The referee reaches the count of nine. Malik Scott gets to his feet. And just like in the Ali Foreman rumble in the jungle, the referee waves it off. Ridiculous. Let me point out that just like George Foreman looked at his corner while he was down at the end of the rumble in the jungle, right? You know, was cognizant, looked at the corner. The corner told him, I believe it's Gil Clancy back then, to stay on the canvas. Right? Because there's a school of boxing that says, when you get knocked down, use all the time you're given to clear your head. Just like Foreman is on the canvas, looks at his corner, stays down. Then when he pops to his feet, he was surprised that the referee ended the fight. By the way, that's one of Foreman's big gripes. And I think it's a legitimate gripe with the rumble in the jungle. The same thing happens to Malik Scott. Malik Scott's not dazed and confused on the canvas. He looks at his corner. Right? His corner is basically motioning to him to stay down. Right? He's on a knee. In my opinion, a seasoned referee should have looked at him and should have thought, this guy's lucid. So if I reach the count of nine and this guy starts to get up, I'm not going to wave off the fight without saying 10. In other words, if the guy's knees off the canvas after I say 9, the fight should continue. Just like the Buster Douglas Mike Tyson fight continued. Right? For the record, let me say, Foreman in the Rumble in the Jungle is dead tired. I still believe Ali wins that fight. But the fight shouldn't have ended that way, nor should this Malik Scott fight have ended the way it did. Now let's talk about Derek Chisora, because I think Chisora is a player at heavyweight. Chisora is really a poor man's Joe Fraser. <clears throat> let's face it, he doesn't hit as hard as Joe Fraser. He's not as hard to hit as Joe Fraser. He doesn't come in with the bounce that Joe Fraser came in with, right? He doesn't have guys running from his left hook like Joe Fraser did, right? But, understand, 
you have to think of chisora below the waist, right? For those of you who, <laughs> for those of you who have minds that might be in the gutter, don't read too much into that statement. But you need to think of chisora below the waist, right? He moves well. He cuts off the rain. He can get a guy who's a mover, who's an outside fighter, who wants distance between him and the opponent. He can get that guy up on the ropes, right? Not only that, I believe reports about this fight are wrong. I don't believe it's Chisora coming in and wrestling with Malik Scott. I think Malik Scott, who couldn't land a jab in this fight, is grabbing Derek Chisora because what else could he do? Chisora hunted him down. Malik Scott is often on the ropes with nowhere to go. Chisora throws long punches with a loop. So it's dangerous to back away from Chisora because as you're backing away from Chisora, Chisora could well hit you with a looping punch. Right? In fact, the punch that ends this fight seems to be a looping punch. Right? And so my point is simply this. Chizora is going to give a lot of guys a lot of problems. As I said in a pre-fight video, I thought David Hay was bone tired when he knocked out Chizora. I'm not sure if David Hay goes the distance in that fight if it continued. Robert Hellenius wilted against Derek Chizora. Right? Chisora doesn't hit particularly hard. He doesn't throw straight punches. Right? He, you know, is throwing punches with a loop. He can't really alter his game plan and come right down the middle. I'll agree with all of that. Right? Above the waist, Chisora isn't exactly the best puncher ever. But what he is, quite frankly, is a guy who is relentless who's mentally tough, right? I believe that a lot of fans underestimate foot speed, right? I believe that's why YouTube Nation disagrees with me on Tyson Fury, because I believe people don't really place enough emphasis on balance and foot speed. Derek Chisora has both, right? He can hunt you down. Robert Hellenius runs out of gas in that fight, gets a gift decision. Vitaly Klitschko had to work. We know Vitaly Klitschko destroys you. If you're an arm's length away, Derek Chisora comes up and puts his head on Vitaly's chest and goes 12 rounds with him. Here, Malik Scott couldn't even move laterally. He's pinned on the ropes for stretches of this fight. Now, I'll agree. Malik Scott's a better chess player than Derek Chisora. In other words, when they're actually boxing, Malik Scott is by far, in my opinion, the slicker fighter. But Malik Scott was running out of gas. Right? You know, even if the fight continued, I'm not sure if Scott goes the distance in the fight. Scott's running out of gas. Let me also point out, too, that, you know, Derek Chisora, it's a shame. This is just a commentary from a fan that Derek Chisora is not a little bit craftier, not a little bit slicker. Because quite frankly, rather than always be on your front foot and allow the other guy to tie you up, just imagine if Derek Chisora had some Mike McCallum in him. Right? Think like you're coming inside. Knock the guy's hands down. Prevent the guy from tying you up and then punish him. Right? Chizora needs to think about coming up with off-speed pitches. Everything can't be a fastball. But the bottom line is this. Malik Scott, in my opinion, even though he won several of the rounds, looked like he was on borrowed time. He had a problem with Derek Chizora's relentless aggression. That's what guys who cut off the ring on you can do to you, right? 
when Derek Chisora is relentlessly coming inside, a guy has to draw a line in the sand and has to say, okay, you want to come inside? Be inside. Let's fight inside. Right? Derek Chisora's fight style wouldn't work against, let's say, a technician like Floyd Mayweather. Because Mayweather doesn't mind being pinned on the ropes. Right? That's the personality type that beats Derek Chisora. Right? You know, unless you're going to land a haymaker from across the street, right? Or, you know, you have the power to take a step back and then land a haymaker, which is what David Hay did. If you don't have that haymaker capability, you need to be able to deal with Derek Chisora up close. I don't believe Malik Scott has the game to do so. So what you saw here was a superior technician from the outside. Get the outside taken away from him by a front foot heavy relentless stalker. And Scott didn't know what to do. Right? So then, of course, when he gets hit and he goes down, I agree the ref blew the count. But in the round in which Scott gets hit, and he gets hit in the later part of the round, in that round, did you really feel that Malik Scott was dictating the fight, or did you sense, as in the David Hay fight, that Malik Scott was tiring just like Chisora was tiring out David Hay. I think Malik Scott was tiring. I think Malik Scott had such a problem keeping Derek Chisora off of him, he wasn't even dancing. This wasn't like the fight Malik Scott had before this one. He wasn't even dancing. He was surviving. That's the genius of Derek Chisora. It's his below-the-waist game. He's not the biggest puncher in the world. He's not the straightest puncher in the world, right? He's not the most elusive defensively, but he's a stalker. And all I'm saying is against fighters who don't have an inside game, right? That's a very effective strategy. So all I can say is let's keep an eye on um, Derek Chisora if he's fighting guys who like to hover, who like to be outside, and there's talk about him against Kubrat Pulev, my point is simply, those are competitive fights, because even though Derek Chisora might not look like he's a great fighter, right? you don't watch him at work and think Picasso, right? Just understand that a lot of guys can't handle a guy in their face for 12 rounds. And that's what Derek Chisora can do. Anyway, let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us on Roku at Dwyer Boxing News, also at Gambler's Advisory online. And let me just say too, don't hesitate to talk about the rumble in the jungle, the Buster Douglas upset of Mike Tyson, the role of the referees in those fights, as well as the role of the referee in this fight. For the boxing historians, let me just say, George Foreman claims, and I know Foreman's cleaned it up in recent interviews, but George Foreman of a few years ago used to claim that the referee in the Rumble in the Jungle was on the take. Now, I'm sure that, you know, that's probably sour grapes by a fighter who lost his title in that fight. But go back and look at that film. Understand what YouTube and the Internet allows us to do. You can actually go back and look at these fights. Let me also say this, too. If you haven't seen the Derek Chisora, Malik Scott fight yet, I have a link to that fight posted on The Wire Boxing News. Dot com. Give it a look. Let me know your thoughts. Thanks for stopping by.